Hey guys, what's up? You're watching the EJ Tech Show with me, Sahil and Soham. And today, we're going to be talking about the new OnePlus 8T, which comes nearly six months after the original OnePlus 8 series. So in a span of literally no time, or very little time, you're now getting three flagship phones from OnePlus. So you've got the OnePlus 8, you've got the OnePlus 8 Pro, and now you have the OnePlus 8T. And as a potential customer can get confusing if you are planning to buy one of these OnePlus phones, which one do you actually go for? And with this sort of positioning in the market, it just now feels that OnePlus is no longer competing with one specific brand, but rather it's just competing with itself. Yes, especially with the OnePlus Nord series coming in at a sort of yeah. mid-range price point. Now for the OnePlus buyer, they, yeah. they've got so many options to choose from all the way from the top spec OnePlus 8 Pro all the way down to the OnePlus Nord and very likely we might even have more new Nord devices, yeah. you never know. And I think the 8T is somewhat of a sort of, um, how should I put it nicely? This is sort of a swan song in the sense that OnePlus wants this to be the remembrance of the 8 series. This is yeah. what they want the 8 series to be remembered. And I think by. just to be clear, uh, the OnePlus 8T isn't a direct successor to the OnePlus 8 Pro because that's a separate flagship in yeah. its own right. Uh, this is more of an upgrade to the OnePlus 8. Yeah. And like with a lot of other smartphones, flagship smartphones that were launched this year, uh, the OnePlus 8T is playing to the number games and it's got a lot of big numbers, right? So it's got a Snapdragon 865 processor, yeah. it's got 120 hertz high refresh rate display, it's got 65 watt fast charging. It's got Android 11. Yeah, it's got Android 11. So numbers wise, it's up there. But when it comes to any OnePlus phone, there are three standout features. One is the display, one is the performance, mm -hmm. and the third thing is, of course, software. So let's start with the display first. So this has, as you said, a 120 hertz Super AMOLED display. Yeah. But more importantly, it does not have a QHD plus resolution like the OnePlus 8 Pro series. So if that's a deal breaker for you, you should still be going for the 8 Pro series. Yeah. But there's virtually very little difference between OnePlus's QHD. The, the screen is a little different in the sense that that's giving you a more curved, those curved bleeding exactly. edges. This is completely flat. And it really depends on what you prefer. If you prefer yeah. uh, the curved edges because that does give you a more premium look, then you can go for that. But if you're a fan of the flat display, then this is the yeah. perfect and alternative. Unless you're taking a microscope to it, you yeah. won't really notice that drop in resolution. Yeah. It's still a very crisp screen. And then the high refresh rate makes everything more fluid. Oh, we already know that. So good. Uh, we're talking about fluid and fast. Uh, let's just quickly talk about that 65 watt yeah. fast charging. Now, the fast charging has always been a staple of OnePlus phones. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the Warp 30 charges were fast enough. But now this, if anyone likes to juice up even more quickly, this is perfect. So under, like what, under 40 minutes? Under yeah. 40 minutes you're getting... Just around 39 yeah. to 40 minutes yeah. for zero to full. Yeah. That's what our charging test uh, got it under. Yeah. And on a full day's usage with that 4500 mAh unit, which is almost as large as the one on the OnePlus yeah. 8 Pro, it will give you easily one days of usage. Yeah. If you're frugal, even more. I think uh, with also, if you're watching out of content on full brightness, you're easily getting about five to five and a half hours of screen on time. Exactly. Which is really good exactly. for a smartphone at this price point. Yeah. That's that's a good number. Even with problems. heavy usage, like just Netflix, HDR yeah. content, and Call of Duty mobile, high yeah. refresh rate, gaming, everything, even then, it'll get you like at least four, four and a half hours of screen on time, which is very impressive for yeah. a phone like this. So not only does it have a good battery, it charges really quick. And that I think is a big plus for any buyer. Yeah. Okay, so the third thing, which makes, well, this is probably the most important thing that makes a OnePlus phone a OnePlus phone. Now that's the software. So Oxygen OS, uh, we've talked about it so many times in our other reviews, how great it is and how fantastic it is. Now we're getting Oxygen OS 11 based on yeah. Android 11. Yeah. And I'm guessing the experience should now even be better than before. Um, it is no? a, it's a bit of a mixed bag. It okay. is better on the whole as someone who's used a OnePlus device in the past as a daily driver as well. Yeah. It is somewhat different, but it's not all bad and it's not all good either. Okay. There are some things that they've changed, which I don't love and some things that they've retained, which I absolutely love. For example, now you get um, this really nice design theme throughout all the OnePlus apps. So whether you're in the calculator app or in the notes app or in the photos app, you're getting nice, big, chunky fonts. You're getting a very minimal look. And that's something I always like from my uh, yeah. smartphones. I don't particularly like cluttered uh, UI. Sure. And OnePlus has really done that very well with Oxygen OS 11. A few things like earlier, 
uh, for example, this is the OnePlus 7T. Now on this, you could just swipe down from anywhere on the screen and you get the notification drawer and that's a yeah. very handy feature. That was feature. very convenient. Yeah. It was really convenient because you didn't have to shuffle your hand all the way to the yeah. top. In this, unfortunately, on the 8T with the Android 11 update, it's no longer there. They've now replaced it with this on Oxygen OS 11. This is basically a sort of dashboard. Yeah. Which is useful, but I but wish they just left a lot that. of the work you'll be doing will be on the notification panel, switching to dark exactly. mode, uh, ch ch changing different settings. Yeah. That happens on the notification panel. So it makes a lot of sense, and it was a great feature to have yeah. on these other OnePlus phones. But still, Android 11 on the whole is nice. It's, yeah. lot, it's a lot snappier. Um, in customization options, you also can change the accent color of the entire phone. Yeah. So bubbles, speech bubbles, text bubbles, etc. Things like that will be a certain yeah. color. You can choose whatever color code you want. They let you do that. You can change app icons. You can even download icon packs. So by default here, you get Oxygen OS icon pack and the Hydrogen OS icon pack. Mm -hmm. And you can even download more, buy more from the app yeah. store. It's no longer the debate that, oh, you need a clean stock Android experience for it to be the best Android user yeah. experience you can get. Oxygen OS has proved that you don't need that. You can have customization while having a fairly clean look as well. And no one does it better than OnePlus. Uh, but the one thing that I didn't mention, I said there were three things that stand out for this phone. Usually there are four things, and I didn't mention that. The four things always design. OnePlus has always been known to be these really unique, simplistic, but very elegant design. Case in point. Yeah, so OnePlus 7T is a great example of that. Uh, if you don't like the rounded uh, thing on the rounded uh, module, camera module, then maybe not so much, but if you're okay with this, this is a really nice design. But this, on the other hand, with the OnePlus 8T, now there's nothing wrong with it. It's a nice looking phone. Uh, it's got a glossy back panel. Mm -hmm. Although it's glossy, you get very little fingerprint. Yeah, because they change the texture. Yeah, they change the texture. That's nice really good. Yeah. But I prefer this one because that matte finish feels so much nicer. I prefer the OnePlus 8 Pro's matte finish, in fact, over to this uh, as well. Uh, and there is a lunar silver color, which if you have to go for, I'd go for that one because that does give you that really nice matte texture and feels really soft to the touch. This one, I don't know, it just doesn't feel very this nice in my hand. It does slip a lot. It's a little bit well. more towards the Nord, yeah. which is a little weird for me. I don't know why they've done that. Yeah. To take the higher end phone and make it look a little bit like the lower end phone, but still, it's not bad overall. It's still a nice color. It's nice and bright. It changes colors a little bit yeah. uh, depending on how the light hits it. But yes, the OnePlus 70 design-wise certainly seem to have a little bit more character to it. Yeah. This is a little bit more plain Jane, but like I've said this before as well, I think in our OnePlus 8 Pro review, I said OnePlus as a brand is now moving towards doing things the way Samsung does it, as in something that will appeal to everyone rather yeah. than just to their community. Because even though their community is very important to OnePlus, they do realize that they're now becoming a brand that is marketing to everyone. Yeah. So you can't possibly be doing things like this circular camera array. Mm. You'll have to go with something more conventional, something more safe, yeah. like the like what they've done on the 8T. And this is a very simple camera array, if I'm being honest. It's not as unique as what you've expected from OnePlus. Yeah. I've always been a fan of their vertical stack. That's always worked for me. Uh, this one just kind of reminds me of generic camera modules that I've seen. It looks a bit like a Huawei well. phone. Yeah, it does kind of look a bit like the Huawei phone. Uh, but talking about camera performance, uh, you've got a 48 megapixel quad rear uh, setup over here, which when you look at it first, it sounds like, oh, this four cameras should be really good. But then the performance is a bit of a mixed bag, right? They have pulled a bit of a nod here, yeah. which is they've gone for the spec um, chasing a bit as in yeah. the, to be able to market it as a quad camera array. Yeah. But they are trying to offer as much versatility as they can. With yeah, well, and that versatility area. includes, apart from the 48 megapixel main camera, you've got an ultra wide lens, you've got a macro sensor, and you've got that monochrome sensor. Yeah. Honestly, those last two sensors, the monochrome one and the macro one, I think they could have totally done without that and yeah. just given us a telephoto lens over here. Even on the 70, they took yeah. the main lens, the telephoto lens, sorry, yeah. and they took the telephoto lens to do the macro mode and it worked brilliantly. And I yeah. wish they had done that here as well because sometimes when you take telephoto shots, you can notice that there's a significant drop in quality as yeah. compared to the 70 because it has a dedicated telephoto sensor. Yeah. Now, so like I said before, uh, with OnePlus, uh, it is a lot about the number game and they have also fallen for the trap. Let's give people four sensors, let's give yeah. them everything else that the competition was offering. But I don't think that was needed over here. I think a triple camera setup with a telephoto lens would have been as efficient or even better than what you're currently getting. Especially right since they, the main sensor remains unchanged. It's yeah. still pretty much the same 48 megapixel sensor on the 70 and even the 7 before that. So the sensors haven't particularly been upgraded. And 
I think OnePlus probably thought that, okay, since we're not upgrading the sensor, might as well upgrade the number of sensors we have on the back. Okay, so quick uh, mention about the processor and the performance, uh, because we know that OnePlus is really good when it comes to general day-to-day -day performance. And this gets the powerful Snapdragon 865 uh, processor, same as the OnePlus 8 Pro. Uh, so you're good with pretty much everything you throw at this phone, whether it's heavy multitasking or heavy gaming. And of course, it gets this version, at least the aquamarine color version, uh, gets 12 gigs of RAM. Yeah. So again, gaming is no problem. Multitasking is no problem. Nothing is a problem. Yeah, so <laughs> you're, you're pretty good to go uh, in that regard. I'll just say this though, uh, when OnePlus had launched the 7T last year, it came with a more powerful processor yeah. than the 7, 7 Pro. Yeah. Uh, the 7 Pro got an 855, but got the, the 8 got the 855 Plus. Plus. So a lot of people were thinking that some, the same thing was going to happen over here as well. Uh, it didn't happen for two reasons, because A, they didn't launch the 8T Pro, which yeah. might have got it if they did launch it. And the second thing is, if they do put an 865 Plus processor in this, and if they give it other features that's also missing, let's say wireless charging or IP68 water resistance rating, and honestly, no one is going to buy the OnePlus 8 Pro or the OnePlus 8, and they might probably not even buy the OnePlus 9 Pro when that comes out next. Because all those features, yeah. if they're already included here, then what's the point? But to be fair, OnePlus was with the 7T and the 7T Pro signaling to customers that, you know what, we're going to have two launch cycles a year. Yeah. And both times we're going to launch flagships, we're going to launch the best of the best. Now with this, I think OnePlus is signifying a little bit more that, you know what, hang on, maybe we've gone at this the wrong way last year. Mm. We're not going to have two main flagship launches. We're going to have one main flagship launch, which will be the non-T variant. And then the T variant will be sort of a stopgap between the yeah. Nord series and the top spec uh, series. Okay, so uh, bottom line though, and this is an important question. Uh, obviously, I think that if you already have the OnePlus 8 Pro, then great, you don't need to upgrade to the OnePlus 8T. It doesn't make much sense. Yeah, it'll be uh, more of a downgrade. Yeah, it'll be more of a downgrade, exactly. But from the OnePlus 8, does it make sense or not? I would say no, you can still hold out for the OnePlus okay. 9 because the OnePlus 8 is still a very good phone. Mm -hmm. In fact, in some aspects, like the design, etc., I think the OnePlus 8 is something that people would prefer. Wait for the new model, weigh your options, see if that's better, watch our reviews again. Yeah. And if you like that, then go for the next 9. But uh, if you still not uh, want for any OnePlus phone this yeah. year and you're, you know, hell-bent on buying a OnePlus phone, then I think this is a very good starting off place, the yeah. OnePlus 8T, because uh, it's giving you very similar specs to the 8 Pro. The key differences are, of course, this gets a flat display. It doesn't get wireless charging, and it doesn't get IP68 water resistance rating. But apart from that, and also it doesn't get the QHD Plus resolution. Yeah. But apart from those things, it's very similar to the OnePlus 8 Pro, and it's giving you very similar performance as well. So honestly, you can't really make a mistake over here. It's, it's a sweet spot. Yeah, uh, price to the performance. OnePlus 8 and the 8 Pro. Price to performance. This is around 45 triple nine for the 12 yeah. GB RAM variant. Sorry, not around exactly 45 yeah. triple nine for the 12 GB RAM model. That's amazing because that's what OnePlus was uh, charging users for. Actually, more than that for the OnePlus 7 Pro. In fact, if you go right now to Amazon and search for the OnePlus 7 Pro, yeah. The 12 GB RAM model will be priced somewhat similarly. Yeah. And that's now after it's been so long since that's been launched. Yeah. That way, I think this is great value for money. Yeah. Well, okay, that's it for our review for the new OnePlus 8T. Let us know what you think about the new smartphone from OnePlus. Are you planning to buy it? Let us know in the comment section. Let us know your thoughts, your feedback. And if you haven't done already, do download the Editor G app. We'll see you next time very soon. Thank you for watching.